Ooh, what do we have here? Eddie Pope's fish back. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassing. We are taking a little break from on the water activities this week, but we are back in the studio opening up some old school gold that I just received from Bass and Bud Randall Pink Floyd. This is going to be a good one. So, Randall Pink Floyd, whose real name is Kevin. Uh, sends this from Oregon. Ah, a little West Coast action. All right. Uh, well, I'm really curious to see what he sent. I have no, no idea what is coming my way. Except that I'm probably going to like it. Ooh, I see some bags and I see some paper. Wow, what do we have here? Ha <laughs> Nice little note that we'll have to get into. A dear Retro, a long time subscriber to your excellent channel. I love vintage lures and fishing at old school and appreciate your unique content. In close, please find some vintage lures and other stuff from my personal collection. I began buying interesting lures from a booth in the area of an antique shop several years ago. Well, I met the owner of that booth and happened to be the head engineer for the Lure Jensen Lure Company. Uh, when it was still owned by the Jensen family in Hood River, Oregon. David the Engineer is a fascinating man who would be given an existing lure or prototype and be told, build the tool and machinery so we can produce that lure. And that's exactly what David did. Most of these lures come from when Lure Jensen sold the company to Arapala and the production all got outsourced overseas. Uh, Phil Jensen, the third generation owner, asked David what he wanted for his years of service. And David asked for all the interesting lure inventory and the jigs, templates, and tooling. No way. Uh, now at advanced age, David sells the inventory off of a mentioned store. <laughs> Enclosed is a signed Hot Lips autographed by Linda England and Frida Lee. Both are Bass and Gal fishing pioneers and in the BASS Hall of Fame. Linda is considered the greatest woman professional angler of all time. Top winner of the Bass and Gal circuit and even the first woman to finish in the money in a BASS Open tournament. Sadly, they have both passed away. Linda and Frida personally signed this bait for David when they visited the Lord Jensen headquarters. I'm still trying to buy David's Rappala Minnow signed by Laurie Rappala. <laughs> wow, if you find that, let me know. David went on in years to consult with the Yakima Bay Company and even own Bud's Lure Company before selling it off to retire. I approach any vintage lure as a fisher, so please feel free to fish all these lures if so compelled. I enjoy your channel thoroughly and remember to fish it old school your friend Randall Pink Floyd. Sir, thank you. And yeah, that right there is what this channel is all about. Oh my goodness. So what do we have here? And I see a little note. Okay, this says Lord Jensen Hot Lips Express, signed by BASS Hall of Fame, Kathy England and Frida or Freda Lee. <laughs> Let's open that thing up. Oh, wow. Well, this is not going to be one I'm going to fish. I'm just going to tell you right now. So Randall, man, I can't believe it. So there's one side signed. And the other. Oh, man. And that is actually a money, money little crankbait. I need to do more Lord Jensen stuff on the channel, by the way. This might be a uh, good reminder to do so. <laughs> well, that is going to be a collector and not a caster. Whew. 
<laughs> this is gonna be a good show. I got a feeling. Uh, Helen Tackle Company Vintage Flatfish. Color dating back to 1942. Ooh. Yeah, that's a neat little bait. I have actually been meaning to do a little bit more fishing with a flatfish. Check out the double hook design. That has just got to be one of the most unique hook hangers I've ever seen. Nice looking old school orange with uh, red dots bait. What is that, like potato bug or something? I love that. All right, South Bend Lure Jensen, Trout Arena, replica member premium in the 2005 NFL CC Collectors Club. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at that little box. Oh, that thing's cute. <laughs> NFL CC? Yeah, buddy, this is going to be a fun one. Oh, ho, ho. wow. That's a neat little bait. So the Trout Areno, it's got a little double hook on there. Nice little scoop bill. Oh, and I love that frog pattern, by the way. That's cool. Let's check this other one out and see if that color is any different. Yes, it is. Oh man, it's like Buck Owens guitar. The old red, white, and blue. One of my favorite colors of the Bass Areno by far. Very nice NFL CC replica. Wow. We're like three lures in and I'm already pumped. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what do we have here? This says a generic wood prop bait, a origin unknown, found in a very old tackle box. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now, that's heavy. So I'm gonna venture to say that actually might be a subsurface bait similar to the old head and minnow. Um, something tells me that that thing is not a topwater. More of a old school spy bait, probably from the 1950s. Very cool. Ooh, what do we have here? Eddie Pope's fish back. I have no idea. I've never seen that before. That is a vac metal in gold. It's got a good rattle. That has got to be one of the wildest things. Clearly some sort of flatfish imitation, but made of plastic. And that's a sinking bait. That does not feel like a floating bait to me at all. <laughs> I love the scale pattern, by the way. Check out how cool that is. I don't know. I haven't seen any casters yet, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> All right. Ooh, an Alan Cole's AC plug. And that looks like an old version of the AC plug. <laughs> and a nice trout pattern. Very stiff tail, by the way. One of the first ever big baits for bass. Obviously, this is a smaller version of it, but that is a good looking little number. And I love that trout pattern. Woof! Wow. <laughs> no way. What do we have here? It says a head and tackle company, a slope nose, modern production uh, of the first lure head and made 
before 1903. Ooh, yep, yeah, this is one that Lornette, this is a bait that Lornette came back out with, a modern day version of the slope nose. And they actually already discontinued it. So it was up probably for maybe a year or, or less, and now it is gone again. I do have a few of these and I have cast them. They actually fish really well. And so this is definitely one that will be a cast or I will add this to my head and tackle box. Fish is a lot like a Zara Spook, but because of that metal collar, it definitely gives off a little bit more splash, but walks really nice. Nice bone color, by the way. Oh, what is this? Is this a Lord Jensen model? Ah, the Nils Master Invincible Floating Minnow Finland. <laughs> that is not your standard bass minnow, is it? That definitely has sort of a Euro flair to it. Is that yarn? Red yarn on the treble hook? <laughs> a heavy, heavy minnow bait with a unique shape. Look how flat it is on the top and the bottom. Oh, but I bet that could catch a pike, huh? Ah, I think I know what this one is. So the Rush Tango from the Lure Jensen Lure Company, the Rush Tango Minnow Replica. This is largely considered the first ever crankbait, the Rush Tango Minnow. The Creek Chub Wiggler is the first one with a metal lip, but this was the first crankbait in just the most pure sense of the form, a bait that had a slope nose that would dive on purpose. That is a rather substantial crankbait, by the way. That is not a small bait at all. Really nice color. That's like a yellow with a red head. And yeah, you can see this bait would definitely make a little bit of commotion in the water. We'll check out the other box to see if it is a different color or the same color. I got a feeling it might be a different color. Ooh, and it is. Oh, ho, ho, ho. now that is the color that I'm more familiar with in the Rush Tango Minnow. I don't know if that's called Parrot. It's got sort of a lime green top, orange on the side, and yellow on the belly. Either way, an absolute stunner of a bait. That is pretty. Solid wood construction and kind of looks like a bomber. From that up, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Ah, this is a Lord Jensen bait, and I actually don't have one of these, believe it or not. This is the Ed Moore's Sugar Shad, which ultimately became, I think, the Lord Jensen Sugar Shad, but that is a nice version of a lipless crankbait. I've always liked the profile of this bait. I like the fins. I like the fact that it's got sort of a contoured look to it. I've never thrown one, but I think I'm gonna add this to my lipless crankbait tackle box for sure. Let's give her a rattle. Ooh, that's a good rattle. All right, I'm gonna keep this one off because I'm definitely gonna fish with this one. <laughs> What do we have here? Oh man. Well, we'll start with the patches. <laughs> uh, looks like a charter member for the North American Fishing Club. I think I was a member of this at some point. Not a charter member, but I definitely had a decal or two. <laughs> Ooh, really nice old school BASS patch. Yeah, I love that logo. That is not uh, not a new one. Ah, and Epping Eppinger, world famous daredevil. 
Ooh, favorite of prize winning fishermen. And if I had to fish with one lure the rest of my life for any species of fish, it would be the two fifth of an ounce Eppinger Daredevil Imp. So I definitely appreciate that patch. Looks like there's another bait in here, spinner bait of some sort. I love, by the way, that he put labels because I don't know half of this stuff. Ah, the Shannon Tackle Corporation Shannon Twin Spinner, uh, a father to the modern day spinner baits. I think I read somewhere that the first ever spinner bait was, in fact, the Shannon Twin Spinner. Oh, that's a good looking bait. Look at that. Dual arm, couple of. Looks like an Indiana blade of some sort. Nice bucktail and really unique shape of that hook. <laughs> Almost squared off at the back. Um, That is a really, really good looking bait and I'm gonna have to think long and hard about whether or not I throw this one. Um, I might have to throw that one to get some underwater footage. What do you think? That might be worth saying. Wow. Uh, and last but not least, a Daiwa. Procaster Reel. So this looks like a Daiwa PS25B bait casting reel. I'm pretty sure the first ever model of Daiwa bait caster I had was this one. Whew, absolutely awesome model. Yeah, we'll have to uh, get this thing souped up. Ooh, that might just need some new line and that might be ready to go. Oh, yeah. Wow, awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Bass and Buds, thanks for tuning in. And Randall Pink Floyd, thank you for making this episode of Retro Bassin possible. If you guys are looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place next week. And until then, keep the carpet side up. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.